Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Seats for Cup 5. This is Nims, and I'm here with Shrivekar and Just Sayan. Uh, we're going to commentate the next match, which is Zale versus Nyman. But uh, before we go into that, let's talk about the sponsors, uh, because this whole event is uh, only happening because of our lovely sponsors. But even before I talk about the sponsors first, let's go to our Facebook page and see what you can get out of this event. So on the Facebook page, which is Take TV, you can go to SSC5 Raffle. And yes, this time exclamation raffle actually works, and there is a raffle indeed. You can enter your, your details. So for example, Kong Shu. Yeah, that's me. Uh, your email address, uh, Kong Shu at Cloud9GG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, and country is uh, America. Merca. That will work. And uh, you can get those awesome prizes here um, that uh, represent our sponsors who are Need for Seat, uh, making great chairs. Then uh, Logitech G doing uh, some amazing peripherals, keyboards, mice, uh, some headsets as well. Really cool stuff. Um, some headsets from Sennheiser, gaming headsets actually, that you can uh, also get. Uh, Sennheiser, really, mm, I, I really recommend for all the audio stuff. And then we also have Macherino, um, one of our new sponsors, where you can donate and increase the prize pool. The prize pool is almost there, increased by $500. There's also a code you can get. So if you donate here, you sign in. And uh, instead of just giving us money from your pocket, you can uh, try to use the code seat story, seat story, which adds one dollar. I think some codes are still live, so you can go there and actually increase the price pool. And why would you like to increase the price pool for the tournament? Because there are stretch goals. The stretch goal is musical chairs on stream and Reynolds versus Force, and so we can get that if the price pool increases, which is cool. But um, that's that. Zale versus Nyman. This is the third quarterfinal, guys. Who do you think is going to win this? Uh, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zale has been on a huge tear throughout the tournament with the Zoo deck, um, doing extremely well coming into this. Uh, going maybe even like 10-1, I think, was his record with Zoo so far. But unfortunately for him, Nyman does ban Zale's Warlock. So there will be no more Zoo from Zale. From Zule. <laughs> Zule, <laughs> in this way, yeah. Um, and then my strategy was to ban Warlock most of the time. And uh, mm -hmm. Zule bans Warrior, Strife Code. Do you think this, uh, this means um, he will have an advantage? Uh, uh, I have no idea. I mean, Nyman, I, I, I didn't really like Nyman's bans. You know, he's been in Warlock the whole time, but he's made it this far and it's all his work. So, yeah, I, I kind of, I do believe in Nyman. I guess he, I think he's going to win. All right, I just want to remind everybody that this is best of seven now. Uh, last year was standing still, and the guys brought additional decks. For Zale, I believe it's a Hunter, and for Naiman, it's a Druid we haven't seen from him yet. Yep. Kind of standard classes. Yep, this is the first game, though. Shaman. Is Zale Shaman not a, not a normal deck? He has Stormcrack in his deck. Yeah, uh, Zale told me, I, I think yesterday when I was casting Zale's match, his Shaman got banned, but he told me this is a, his own version of Shaman with a twist. Okay, so, okay, so it could be anything. Could even have Bog Creepers. Zeus! Wait, wait, does it have Bog even Creepers? Even Bog Creepers. Bog Champ? Maybe it's a oh. Zeus Shaman against So Dr. if he has Bog Creepers, I think he's going to win. If he doesn't, I don't think so. Last time I've seen Zalei play Shaman, he was testing some kind of kind of hybrid Shaman almost, where there were Abusive Sergeants, Lightning Storms, and still Fire Elementals in the deck as well. So it goes a little bit further into the, um, the late game, but it also has a lot of aggressive tools as well. Well, it's actually awesome to see because this means you can still innovate in this kind of meta game and then have your own personal twist on the deck. Yeah, I, I, actually, I, it's, there's no way that Zalea's Ball Creeper in, his, in, in this list <laughs> looking at the cards. <laughs> no ball like, zero percent chance of Ball Creeper. But this wow, is a nice Stormcrack coming out here. here. Yeah, Stormcrack's uh, excellent here. Puts Zalea way ahead, and even with the, uh, the Totem Golem next turn to follow up as well. So that actually perfect perfect against the Surf and Leo Grout of 3-3. Three, three, three. Yeah, and also uh, this Shaman versus Shaman, we've uh, we talked about it before, but this is all about trading till, till the point where you can actually go face. Like, we're not exactly sure what Zalei is playing in his deck, but it seems like an aggressive one as well. Yeah, this is still anyone's game, though, because even though this trade lines up uh, super well for Zalei, uh, there's an Argent Horse Rider take out the 3-2, and Nyman has a higher value hand for now, so... Yeah, he does have the Flame Wraith Faceless already. Oh, Sir Finley. So Zalei is, it's his own version of like Aggro Shaman in a way. I usually don't see Sir Finley in mid-range because you need those totems for mid-range. Yeah. Uh, mid-range Shaman's all, ba all based on like Thunder Buff Valiant generally, so. 
Yeah, there's no chance that Zelay is playing a mid-range Shaman then. It has to be an aggressive version of a twist with the Stormcrack. I wonder what else he is actually playing in this uh, list of his. Well, for Zelay, the Stormcrack makes uh, a lot of sense in this tournament, especially because there's a lot of four health minions that become quite difficult for um, the Shaman to deal with. Things like the uh, the Frothing Berserker or in the mirror, the Totem Golem. So having a Stormcrack there was pretty, pretty good for Zelay. Looks like he might be checking for maybe a one damage hero power first. Maybe if he gets a hero power, he might not play the Squire instead this mm -hmm. turn. Oh, he gets... This is not one you normally see because there's such bad synergy with Doomhammer. Yeah, also uh, the choices were actually Armor Up and Shape Shift, I believe. Oh, interesting. So he could have taken Shape Shift, but it decides to take this... This is more tempo because it has uh, this 1-1 one, one dagger left over. But, you know, there's a... <laughs> there's a shape Shift goes very well with Doomhammer, so... Yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that decision there? Um, about taking the, the hero power with the weapon? Yeah, yeah, the rogue instead of the druid one. Hmm. Well, with this, he will be able uh, to deal two damage to two different sources with uh, with two mana. Yeah. So this is too early, right, to to go face. You might have to take out the 7-7 seven, seven here. Yeah. Plus, um, Zelay's hand was already so little, low on value that he wanted to at least squeeze a little more out of the hero power in case his next few turns ended up giving him some higher drops. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Tanking it with the face. We value this Finley pretty highly here. <laughs> Gotta save the Murlocs. Yeah, it's, it's just such a board control matchup, so... Interesting. Yeah, it, is, it is a minion, and this minion can trade really well. If there is a flame to totem, it can kill a Feral Spirit. I mean, Zelay recognizes that uh, Nyman is overloaded for the next turn, so this is a huge, huge tempo push by him. Yeah, this Get out is on all the board in. and try and control, yeah. <laughs> That's all his cards. And Nyman is also playing a bit of a different version. This is not the standard thing from below. Uh, he is playing Assassin Knowledge. He is playing Sentinels as well. Uh, uh, elemental Destruction, right? And I think there, there was definitely one. One, yeah. one deck, maybe two. I've seen one for sure. I casted Nyman a lot this tournament so far, just randomly. So I, I do believe he has Elemental Destruction in his deck. Uh, decides to love. He, I guess, since his lay is completely out of cards here, Nyman just says, you know, I also have the ancestral knowledge in my hand oh. right now. I'm just gonna. This hex would have been incredible last wow. turn too. Yeah, he's just gonna out try to outvalue his lay here, right? So just gonna use the removal here instead of feral spirits, since feral spirits trades poorly against the board. It's not gonna actually remove the totem golem. Yeah, the knowledge is going to be huge. It allows him to have this different strategy. That's like the worst top deck, right? Oh, <laughs> by far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we don't know exactly what's in the deck, but okay. still, Hex just uh, has no use here at all. <laughs> well, if you're playing Hexes in the deck, is there a chance that you're cutting the Lava Burst from your build? Ooh, maybe. I mean, he's actually less burn-oriented, because he's even using Stormcrack, mm -hmm. so that can't right. face. So he's playing a face shown with, with no face cards. Yeah. Well, so. it's, it's, if it's board-oriented, you, you are maybe better versus Zoo. But then do you play Storms as well in this deck? I, I think we had to just see what Zelay is playing because, yeah, I, I'm not really understanding. Well, so far this deck worked for him for sure, unless it was banned every match. <laughs> Shaman has taken a lot of bans so far, and the text that Zelay has put in seem to favor those where if they leave Shaman up, then you have a few cards to deal with in more controlly matchups as well, mm -hmm. such as the Hex that he's been, uh, been unfortunate to draw this turn. I think I do expect Feral Spirits to come down here. There's a lot of three health minions uh, on Zelay's side. And, you know, Feral Spirits only does two damage, but the, that makes the Flame Juggler next turn pretty appealing, where you can try to get that ping on some one health. There's going to be a lot of one health minions after. I think I like just playing Abusive as well. Just, yeah, just to have another minion. Yeah. Uh, especially because on board, this, this board does not go through the Feral Spirits. They, there's only, what, like five damage. Yeah, Nyman also has Druid Hero Power, so hopefully he can, hopefully for his sake, he can get some of those, like, one damage pings on these three health minions after the trades. So this is a situation where you have to hex to keep the board. If you if you hex, you're you're able to kill one of the wolves, kill the second easily as well, kill the two one, so you have full board under your control. You play the three four. You know there's elemental destruction in the deck, but at least you're you're still on an all in plan. Yeah, think. you're an all in situation. Uh, I one hundred percent like hex here because since you're at 21, there are 15, you're all in anyways. Say there's play Flame Wreath, you don't even kill it, just go all in at that point, exactly. right? Flame Wreath doesn't have taunt, so why save extra Flame Wreath right now when Flame Wreath doesn't have taunt anyways? I, I think you just go for it, everything. Yeah, I like it as well. Cyan, do you like it? 
Yeah, plus you can make the read that Nyman doesn't have the second flame wreath in the hand, considering that on four mana he decided to play the Naked Abusive and the Feral Spirits instead. It could have made the 7-7 seven, seven and then tried to push uh, with the 7-7 seven, seven next turn behind the Feral Spirits, giving Zule very little option to reach it and then kind of setting up his own win condition. Is he going to keep Hex after yeah, all? comes down right now. It's something has to happen. So wow. he still has, hopes to get more value out of this Hex. All right, with the Hex in hand, Diamond is probably pretty happy about this. Yeah, and I'm just trying to think how, you know, like, what he wants to do this turn. Uh, ancestral knowledge, like, he's thinking whether he even wants to use that this turn, right? You can just spend your mana on other things, including even a hero power here, if it lines up well, yeah. which Develop it kind of does, the right? Whole, the whole board here should be developed. Everything but the ancestral knowledge, and then go into knowledge next turn. Yeah, I like, I, like, I like abusive into abusive, kill the free four. Then uh, maybe you just flame juggler next. To, yes, because all three targets are good. At that exactly. Point. If you if you hit Finley, you can finish it off with the two free. Mm -hmm. Then you can always like hero power as well to finish the two one. Yeah, I think that is the best order. I mean, you don't want the flame juggler hitting the totem goal. Yeah. So you just want to trade that first, then flame juggler. Is there some kind of trade you want to do first before playing? No, you because you want the widest board possible. You don't want exactly. flame juggler hitting face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I swear, still, every yeah. time you see Flame Juggler, yeah. it just has this tendency to go face. <laughs> Troll Juggler, yeah. And you just probably go face with this guy, right? You don't half trade here, because then you're just getting a minion a double attack next turn. Yeah. Well, you also are closer to uh, closer to finish your opponent off with the Lightning Bolt and, and Knowledge as well. Yeah. I actually really like Druid Hero Power. I, I actually think Druid Hero Power might be like the best in the mirror because it's so flexible. Like if you start racing people in the face, it it's like a hero power that can trade. Not like mm -hmm. Hunter and Warrior and Priest all have like mathematically like two two like two health I think swings. You know, Life Tap is still better though because it's a value Ooh, game. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe it is, but yeah, it's like. It's, it, he almost had like the flexibility of the mage hero power, but if you ever start like mage hero power the other person in the face, it's better because you get an extra armor, it's got two Yeah, so point shape, swing. shape shift sometimes may be better than fire blast. And it has synergy with doom hammer. It's like really good in this matchup. But then still life tap will be better because it's all about trading, so you want to have more cards too. And speaking of doom hammer, once Nyman picks up that doom hammer and he's past these feral spirits, the game is just over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One Doom Hammer away from victory. And Zelay has been very, very um, greedy, holding onto this Hex for the past two or three turns. And we've suggested even just Hexing a, a Feral Spirit is enough at this point. I mean, to, yeah. You're all in on the board, and you could have pushed he's, an extra two or four it. damage at this point. What is he expecting from Nyman, actually? Well, if Nyman... I mean, I think Nyman expects that card to... I don't know. Like, this, can, can Nyman expect that card to be a Rock Biter with how Zelay played? Because this card's been we've held seen in... Two. Two rock biters already. Yeah, into so he doesn't zone, even so. care about being, say, above 12 after for the, you know, combo 14. Maybe he expects AoE. So Zale keeping the hex to, to, to counter the 7 7, but also like bluffing that, hey, I have this AoE, I'm just waiting for you to, to yeah. build up a bigger board. I mean, I was at 13, so even if that was like Doom Man Rock Biter, he doesn't die here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, frogged. Uh, that's that's called punished for keeping the hex. Yeah, <laughs> frogs are plenty for Zelay now. One. Now you have to hex this turn, like five turns too late, unfortunately. Well, you can clear the board if you double hex. Uh, double hex? Guess you have to play defensively. <laughs> I mean, Zelay's got to be kicking himself for not putting those lava bursts in instead of those hexes at this point. Yeah. Maybe Zelay's... Um, was expecting Bog Creeper Shaman to take over the meta. You know, it's like, okay, I'm just gonna hex your Bog Creeper combo. Oh, this looks bad for Zelay for sure. Nyman just pushing damage, also. Might be just out. Healing himself. Might be out of outs. Well, Doom Hammer maybe still can give him something. Fire Elemental. He can play Hex and Fire Elemental. Huh, he has Fire Elemental on his deck. This, uh, is, this is a weird twist on the Agro Shaman. I almost feel like it's kind of like a mid-range Shaman without the totem synergy. It's almost like a more of a base on the individual power yeah. of the card instead of the synergy of the totems kind of mm -hmm. mid-range Shaman, maybe. What do you think about just Fire Elemental in face and using the dagger to clear both frogs and trying to set yourself up for lethal right? next turn? Yeah. yeah, I like it, I think, yeah. 
But uh, here Diamond gets Lightning Bolt and is able to take this game, winning with his own Shaman, eliminating Zalai's Shaman from the game. So a quick 1-0. Yeah, I wonder why he did that, though. That actually seems weird, because his life is so low. Like, one, one reason why you might want to do the way he played was uh, you might want to use your dagger to kill another minion, but when you're mm -hmm. at three, what was, like, six health, you might... Yeah, it seems weird. Okay. Mm, gotta play to win there. Yeah. And maybe as well even has something like Alakir would have been enough just to at least set up for that card, but yeah. it seemed to... Just looking at the list, it seemed like he did want to counter aggressive decks by just being a little high curve, but still playing the same game that they are. Yeah. Unfortunately, the burn would have come into great handy there instead of the hexes, but yeah. also he, he got like a, a bad hero power in a way because he was really wanting like life top to, mm -hmm. to have like more cards. Picks the Dragon Warrior into this deck. Dragon Warrior is excellent against all kinds of shamans. Uh, good opening hand for Zelaya. When are we keeps that? Definitely. Keep Keeping Blood Dicker and, uh, and Astro's Champion. Throw away Slam and Corruptor because he really wants to get a Dragon instead. Oh Let's yeah, see. you're all in on the uh, Champion high roll here. Mm -hmm. On Dragon with the rest do, of the Do you ever keep Slam because you have Blood Dicker? Let's see, because you can Blood... Eh, that doesn't then really you make decrease sense, the right? chance of getting a Dragon so Champion becomes worse. I, I don't think you need to keep Slam and Blood Dicker. Blood Dicker carries every single one drop, right? Like you, I think you only keep Blood Digger against Shaman if you have the coin. Like if you're going second, that way you can Blood Digger. Yeah, you're very happy keeping Blood on. Yeah, on, yeah. On the yeah also, because he's going second, that's yeah. that's good. Uh, if you go, if you go first, it can then it's be awkward. Because you yeah. never play on turn one, then. Yeah. And then like you just always play on turn one, going second. So. And Naiman this time got Finley, so he will be able to get the hero power when oh, wow. he was, wants it. And. Uh, but this works too. Yeah, but this one job though, like. If you expect Black to, Blood to Acre. They're around the same against Blood Dicker, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, they're, I mean, this guy is a little bit weaker to Blood Dicker. Leaves a 1-1 one, one instead of a 1-2, but that shouldn't really matter anyways. This is better against Fire Axe, though. <laughs> That's not the kind of hand you want to see. I believe against this kind of warrior opening, this hand, the only thing that develops pressure from Shaman is Totem Golem. Like, none of these minions work. Yeah, exactly. Can you, do you do Gamble Juggler? Ooh, <laughs> I doubt it. Mm, let me... If you go for Finley and Trog, doesn't do much. You can't even buff the Trog. I mean, if you miss this Juggler, how, what kind of shape does that put you in? Uh, you will too. have you will have you will have to go face, I guess. So you have a one-one and a two-three on board. Your opponent will attack with the two-two into the. The 1-1, one, one, if there's Fiery War Axe, if there's Champion, you're in a bad, in a bad shape because there's two minions suddenly and you, you play catch-up. So the, on turn three, you'll have to rock biter one of the minions. Oh, man. Um, but the situation was bad overall, so he hits it. Yeah. So that was a question, right? Like, can you afford not to gamble? Uh, uh, yeah, maybe not. I mean, you still die to fireworks <laughs> like this too, but yeah, uh, I think the goal here is maybe to save the Tunnel Trog with an Overlord card in the same turn. Definitely, and you want to save that Rock Fighter weapon for something a little more worthwhile than just the 2-2. Mm -hmm. Hero power of Finley? Uh, maybe even just look for Warlock Hero power of Finley and go straight into Life Tap. Yeah, is it worth it to even have a totem here? Um, I think, yeah, this is the version without Thing from below, so I guess you can Finley first. <laughs> if, if you would be playing the, f uh, the Thing version, probably totem up. Just Taunt to totem is basically like another unit, though, because Taunt totem has to pretty much get killed yeah. uh, by the weapon. You're, the only hero power that would be better than Shaman hero power's turn is the life tap, right? yeah. yeah. Well, you have a one out of four to roll the totem, the, the totem that you want. Yeah. But you have a higher percent. Oh, here oh, we got go. it. <laughs> okay, it doesn't even play the Sir Finley. He might even want to hear power again next turn. I don't know. I mean, he doesn't have any really power is value. Yeah, the totems yeah. are threats, so. And uh, for Zalei, there is still no dragon, which means that Alexstrasza champion is just a two free Crocolisk. Yeah. The River Croc stranded in Zelay's hand. Kind of a hard turn for Zelay to man maneuver. It is hard. Ravaging Ghoul is such a good card against the aggro decks that you almost never just throw it out there just to play a minion. Yeah, uh, it's like one of the cards you never do. Wow, okay, like, that is good. Top yeah, end. exactly. Like I like the slam overall because it has to use this first. It tries to get a dragon, so you will have um, Corruptor on the next turn dealing free damage. Now you just coin out the champ, though, right? 
Um, yeah, you can also go into champ. You can go coin corruptor, or you can play a two drop and a three drop. So you just get to maximize oh, yeah, yeah, your, yeah. your turn five going in. Because turn four would be weird huh, if you coin at your champ. Uh, yeah, Slam sets this up pretty well, though, because mm -hmm. it also sets up for Rouge and Ghoul next turn. Exactly. So Slam was really nice. But yeah, now there's the decision what to do, because there was a, a couple of plays still. Nyman's going for the value game. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, just wants those totems. What hero power is he getting, though? Let's see. There's the shape shift. Shape shift. Yep. Insta pick. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do him in your hand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So now we have options. Ghoul actually kills a lot of, of the stuff. And if you go Ghoul coin champion, clear the board. Exactly. The next turn, you still have the Corruptor. Yeah. No, Nightman's only real answer here is just to equip that Doom Hammer and start taking it to the face. Take six damage, kill the ghoul. <laughs> or do you just go for face and uh, try to play an aggressive game? Uh, I mean, there's Warrior Hero Power getting armor up. It's kind of hard to just straight face from this position, right? Yeah. I believe it should be a... Ah, but Dim here doesn't really trade here that easily. Either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. oh, with the second pickup. Oh, that's kind of got to be played. You have so many charges now. It's that's charges good. for 20 turns. I mm. guess, yeah. I mean, you, I guess if it's three threes, you can't exactly double attack them. You're yeah. probably just going to hear a power clear both next turn. Right, right. You got the 22 overall in the next four turns from Doom Hammer plus the Rock Biter. You need to pick up... The warrior is very aware of his life total and extra four to six damage. It's not very hard for Nyman to do. This is actually a hard turn for Zelay, right? Uh, Corruptor is uh, quite nice. It puts like a, a big minion on board, mm -hmm. so it's like a lot of pressure. If you if you just play Frotting, yeah, but Corruptor can be used as a removal. Uh, yeah, but it's hard to play Corruptor. And, uh, it's hard to play Frothing and Fairy Dragon because that's your last dragon. Exactly. You right, right. Top deck. You could corrupt. Like you could, I could see any three moves possible here. You could just do this hero power. I think they're like this the best. Yeah, I like Soleil's play. Yeah. Especially since Frothing already has taunt. Yeah. Well. You do want to play that, but then you can't kill both minions. You could kill the uh, Frothing and play Flame Wreath. Seems weak, Pro though. Probably the best. And then you'll be able to send in the next turn. Because you can't kill the free Freeze, is buffing Frothing. Mm. You, I mean, you can play Sentinel this turn, too, before, but yeah. I, I don't expect Sentinel to be next turn, because his hand is zero value now. Like, there's no point in staying Sentinel this turn. If you're going to play Flame Wreath, you play both, right? You just play that first. There's no point in saving the f Sentinel for next turn, I believe. Yeah, true. And uh, you get a 3-2 and a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah. It's just the question is the here power is really juicy <laughs> right now. So. Well, but um, it's still better to kill the Frothing, right? Yeah, I guess. The Frothing will be big if you hit both anyways. So Sentinel and Flame Wreath, just Flame Wreath. Just the Flame Wreath here, I guess. Oh. And Sentinel as well. Yeah, since it makes sense because it contests the minions board. Yeah. And if the minions go into Flame Reef to clear it, you will have a free two to push damage. Yeah, and a great play um, on Zelay's part, holding back the dragon, making sure the Corruptor's here is enabled for the uh, Execute as well. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. There's almost a uh, 100% chance that Execute's coming down this turn. I don't see like a double face dragon crusher. <laughs> 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 Is this a valid option? <laughs> Not really. Uh, I mean, they, I mean, he would probably win either way, but this is like a hundred percent line kind of. It's like the safe super. Yeah. Just, yeah. There's no reason to open yourself up to some kind of. Do you trade it to the free two? I guess you do. No, you don't. So with this, like you're pressuring your opponent even more, and you actually invite your opponent to trade into your minions. Yeah. This is a very heads-up play from Zelay, knowing that he has the Malkroc next turn as well to try and set up a potential lethal. He has 11 on board. Malkroc pretty much kills uh, nine minutes in trade if he wants to play around it a little bit even. I don't... I just, 
Nyman has to get value from this flame with faces, right? That's like the only way he wins with this hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of expect just Rockbiter trade for two minions, flame wreath trade, like I guess kill everything, you know. Uh, Take eight damage, so you're at five. Much. Well, how about just trade the Sentinel off and then go face with the uh, Doomhammer and play the flame wreath? If you top like another Doomhammer or another burn spell, you have a potential of killing him. Okay. And if Zelay doesn't have lethal, he has to think, okay, maybe I need to make this double trade as well. Yeah, so basically just yeah. uh, turn this around to Zelay. And that makes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you, that, that's a cool play. You could, because if you get your Flame Wreath faces double trade, that feels good for you too. Mm -hmm. Especially with the second Doomhammer in the hand. <laughs> is, he, is he going for the trades after all? It's not like you can really buff the minions as the Dragon Warrior, but on the other hand, this also removes the second execute activators in a way. Malkroc can win Zelay the game here. <laughs> yes, it definitely there, can. There's there's can also lose the game if oh, you get yeah. the Curse Blade. Zelay is far ahead, right? If he gets Curse Blade, he's just. Dead, I think. I 14. think so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very easy to die. 14 plus uh, 6, I believe. No, 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 that's not it's 6. 4 that's, plus 8. It's 8. That's it's way 22. more. It, it, it's... Oh, actually, yeah, you're right. It's like 3, 6, 12, 14, so 26. 12 14. Yeah, yeah it, it is, he is dead if he gets Cursed Blade. 1 in what? 1 in 20? 10? Well, maybe, how many maybe, maybe even less. Like, there, there's not that many weapons that you can actually get from Malkarak. I'm liking the 9-9 a lot better here. Yeah. Uh -oh. Oh. Oh. oh! Oh! Wow! That weapon! GG. Go to face. One and core health ended all. Zalei ties the series. <laughs> that was a scary moment. <laughs> Do you think Zalei was thinking, what if I get Curse Blade here? Yeah. The ropes it so. out, but in the end, uh, it's still probably okay to play Malkarok. Because he was ahead. So if there is even a small chance to just lose the game right there, Mm -hmm. Do you really want to risk it? But uh, it's not that it's not that high to get like uh, curse blade. Actually, curse blade shows up from time to time. But uh, well, Zelay, as a chess player, has to be thinking the Mal uh, the crusher puts him into check. But if the Malkrop gets a three attack weapon or higher, it puts him into checkmate. Yeah. So it's it's a big deal to Zelay to to make that move there as well. He had really good odds on Malkrop overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we have one one, and the shaman is eliminated from this match. Both shamans dead. Naiman goes for his Druid, and Zaleh obviously has to stay with his Warrior. And Warrior being one of the strongest decks overall in this tournament as well. But so so is Druid. So what do you guys think? Warrior versus Druid, who has an edge there? Uh, in, my, in my opinion, Yogdra has a slight edge on Dragon Warrior. Maybe like 5% edge. San, do you agree? Uh, I definitely agree here. Um, it's a battle between ramping and finding your curve. While Zelay does have the coin, uh, Nyman does have Innervate as well. Currently, we see in Nyman's hand um, quite a few dead cards, but once he picks up a Violet Teacher or even a Wild Growth, um, his hand will kind of come together, and that generally is able to pick up a lot more value than uh, Zelay's curve. And so far, Zelay's curve is more um, value-oriented oriented than face, so there's, um, there's a good probability that he isn't able just to rush down the Druid. Yeah, one of the reasons why I like to favor the Druid in this matchup is Dragon Warrior is actually kind of naturally weak to like 3-5 type minions. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of decks run 3-5s just because 3-5 is not a good stat line, but Yogdrid's you know, already running these like th two Vod Teachers and Fandral. They're all 3-5s. They trade well into Korkron, well yeah. into Alex, like everything. But it's like 3-5s, like it's just good against everything Dragon Warrior has. 3-5s is like not good against Zoo, for example. Uh, I mean, Yogdrid's good against Zoo for other reasons, but that's like one reason why I think Yogdrid's very good against Warrior. You also can cheat, as uh, Sam mentioned. Like you can, you can ramp, you can have Innervate. So sometimes just uh, play cards that they can't answer. And uh, you also have good answers for what they do because you have Feral Rage for Frauding, wow. you have Mulch for the 6-6 six, six or a 9-9. Nine, nine. This is not the kind of hand you want to see for Zelay. It's just, yeah. For Zelay? Yeah. Uh, no, no, sorry, sorry, for Naiman. For Naiman. <laughs> Zelay is super happy about that hand. That hand is no, no, glorious. No, sorry, sorry. I mean, for yeah. Naiman, this is a very awkward hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you play a 3-2? The biggest uh, consideration is the 3 2 or just the hero power down over two turns. Oh, man. Hero power down over two turns. Uh, doesn't sound. I think great. you're pretty happy summoning Panther, especially since yeah. you drew the second power of the wild. Yeah. If, if you get Fire Axe, at least you don't get Frothing Berserker, right? Right. But I guess right. you can just trade Frothing Berserker as a 4 4. There's a lot of 
Oh, wait, wait. This oh, there's Axe. <laughs> Speaking of the winners. <laughs> wow. Wrong turn. Axe was definitely better than the champion this yeah, turn. Yeah, yeah. So I guess you can say if you get fireworks, at least you'll get Axe to try to champion to the face. Uh, it's not even kind of what you want to see. Now, if you Wild Grove, you have to think about. Oh, okay, he's going for I like this play from Nyman. Yeah, yeah it's just definitely better. Fairy Dragon. Because Wild Grove's not setting you up for anything with this hand. Yeah. Right? It's like, just this hand's a do nothing hand. And with the do nothing hand, I guess you want to buy time. You have more, to be more so than giving more, yourself more mana. So. So, sometimes it can be hopeful. Mm -hmm. Because if you would Wild Grove this turn, you'd go to five crystals next turn, right? Yeah. Innervate, Ancient War. Nourish. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. But I, I like Savage as well, overall. In this, in this match, it will be hard to Savage because there's a lot of removal for, for the minions. Yeah, Drew usually wins this matchup through taking over the board. You don't necessarily need the burst. Yeah. What do you think? What do you guys think of Nyman's turn now? Do you want to upgrade some roots, or do you want to just clear the frothing here? Uh, if you go for 2-2s, two two, that's not terrible. Uh, th if there is one goal, goal will not really deal with So Inner is golden. You might have a not... Wait, does that make it? <laughs> <laughs> it does stand out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it does stand... You know, one of these cards is not like the other. <laughs> okay, one of these cards is what, suspicious. What, what, whatever. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Oh, no, that's the card. That's the card. If there is a goal, though... Oh. But you gotta go for it, right? <laughs> This is a cool. You, you died. <laughs> kind that of. probably is a little more threatening now. Yeah. Uh, now you're probably sorry that you didn't double I mean, living with the frothing before. We have been talking. Like Nyman is behind, and he's playing to win. So you have to just assume. Like I'm just gonna hope there's no ghoul. Right. You have to like play to win. You can't just wait to die. Okay. In fact, if he waits one more turn for Violet Teacher and. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have one more turn. He's just dead. Because, oh, 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 no. Is that, like is that lethal? Do you, if you play that the other counting. minion first, like mm -hmm. the dragon, you can get one more damage from, yeah, from the enrage. Yeah, that should be lethal. So it's 6, 10, plus 2, 12, plus oh, it's, um, it's much, 11, much okay, it's 23, right? Lethal. I think it's 23 or something. It's a big number. Ouch. And Zalei gets another win, 2-2-1 two, two, versus Nyman on the back of the Ravaging Bull. And this was, that, that was probably the worst Druid draw I've seen yeah, the whole tournament. tournament. For sure. Or at least that I've seen. In in the side where Nyman um, and where Zalei doesn't top like the Ravaging Bull, I think Nyman had a decent chance of even pulling this back, uh, despite the terrible draw as well. But now with the uh, the Yogg Druid down, um, Nyman has to switch over to Tempo Mage to try and uh, take out the Warrior. Yeah, that's true. He had Power of the Wild for the 1-1s, one too, mm -hmm. so... And overall, um, Tempo Mage does not do too well against Fiery War Axe. No, it does not. You, you basically need to try to get your mirror images out to protect your guys, but... Diamond's Tempo Mage is kind of like a weird. It's almost like maybe... Eh, how similar is it to Eloise's Tempo Mage, where she's running kind of like a control mage in a way? Cabalist Stone? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Nyman has Cabalist Stone, but I don't think it, it's quite on that level of Eloise's deck. No Ice Block. Right, right. Yeah, like no Ice Block. Maybe even one Cabalist Stone, so two, for example, it's like less controly, but an Ar Arcane Explosion. <laughs> I don't think so. So this hand for Nyman is okay for now. Well, it seems okay, but the Fire War Axis, as San mentioned, will be deadly. You can even just uh Oh there there are no dragons. No dragons. No dragons. I do not expect a coin champ. <laughs> Time for the Finley. Which one? Did Sally have a dragon in his opening hand? Didn't he have like uh Azutrake? I don't think you'd keep that though. Maybe not in this matchup, especially when you have uh Fire Axe. Like in some matchups you can keep Azutrake. I like Shapeshift here. Uh, it's a very hard consideration. Mm -hmm. In this matchup, um, when people are running out of steam on both sides, like the heal isn't yeah. too bad. Just get some yeah, more valley healing, out of them. You're healing yeah. your minions. A lot of times you can assume that uh, most of the time tempo is just like killing your minions in one shot, not like slowly whittling down. Uh, I mean, there is, there's definitely a value. And you can also hear your face. It's like better warrior hero power in some ways. But I mean, this is cool because it's like it still gives you that one armor, you know, as it becomes a race. Uh, you can kill. Uh, 
Flame Waker with best the Fire of, War Axe and the... Best out of two worlds, in a yeah, way, because yeah. it heals damage and heals you again. Yeah. So. Druid's good. <laughs> as we were saying earlier, the Druid here is just very flexible in how you use it. So now you know there is the Fire War Axe yeah. and more cards. Nyman just can't develop anything of value here. That's not worth taking out with a Torch. Might as well just try to use your AI this turn, try to get a good combo turn eventually. The Dragon is back. Yeah, I mean, I, I doubt he'll ever play Ravage and Ghoul here. It's between Coin. Maybe you can actually consider going for Corcoran. Yeah, definitely. Co coin, Corcoran, go face. Then the next turn you have Corcoran again. And just pressure Mage. Generally, you want to play your slow minions first. Right? Like you don't rather play chargers generally before your slow minions, but every mini has a charger, so... It's reasonable to go Corcoran into Corcoran, and then you kind of make Water Elemental irrelevant as well. Yeah. Champion. This means he values the coin a bit more here. And it's uh, it's actually either... It's one damage difference, because Corcoran will deal four, but you, mm -hmm. you you get to keep the coin. So I guess it makes sense as well. This kind of sets him up to play Drake instead of Corcoran next turn. Like, like I said, you, you know... You, you do want to keep those minions for flexible face damage, right? Like, there's no reason to play Corcoran instead of Drake generally, if they're at that life. Uh, kind of, I like it. I'll be afraid to play Drake this turn, I feel. Unless yeah, I it is your last dragon hunt, but it just, like, breaks so much fundamental rules of Hearthstone. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I like Conqueror more, because yeah. this is the, the, the last dragon. It is the last dragon. I wonder if he would have made it different if he had another dragon, though. What, what if he gets Crusher next turn? He'll be able to coin it at 9-9. Nine nine. No, that's true. You do get to save your coin, so you have more flexibility on, on that end. So for Nyman, can he make a move, or is it still a bad situation? It's a bad situation. He's just had bad hands the whole time. Uh, looks like it's just cycling. He's just digging for, waiting for Flame Waker, right? Yes, exactly. Digging for Flame Waker while buying as much time as possible. Once Flame Waker, once he draws Flame Waker, this hand will be pretty insane. You can Flame Waker Sword, double missiles for free, maybe even Frost Bolt or something. Yeah, but he them. has already put two torches back into his deck as well. Oh, oh. but there's a Flame Waker. So we can have ten missiles. I think he has to pull the trigger this turn because he will also by pulling the trigger here you can play around. Uh, Draconid Crusher. This is exactly turn six. If you just play Azure Drake, you can get crushed here as well. Oh. Yeah, but then like you do have Flame Strike for next turn. That, uh, that's true. Just dumps a missile too here. Huh, what do you think about the dumping the missile there? Um, it's very unlikely to kill the Drake or trying to, set, well, to he, say you don't have the Flame Waker. I guess he wants to dump it now so he can play Double Waker and the second missiles next turn maybe. He could have put everything though. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, that's not true, huh? On, on the seven mana, I mean, with double waker yeah. draw, he does want to develop a board that's a little more resistant against fire war axe as well. So there's some consideration for putting it out there and going all yeah. in on the double waker plan. Because if you save, that you could play uh, Sorok on turn eight and then just dump the one mana spells for oh, free, yeah. and maybe you can use flame strike to just buy that turn for flame tur for turn seven. I don't, I'm not sure. Well, coming into this board, you, you sense your opponent will probably shape shift and kill your Drake with the weapon, so you, you are, like, those minions will stay on board, and you want to remove them next turn. Do you think so? I'm trading the 4-1 in. 4-1's so weak. You can just get that value from the 4-1. Well, I like trading 4-1, but there was, like, maybe a consideration that uh, the weapon will trade there. This is somewhat interesting, because when Nyman does just throw out the missiles the previous turn, his lay's taking the read as, okay, he doesn't have Flame Strike. So I, I can probably go in on my minion board, and gets a little bit punished for it. And in Zelazian, he doesn't even have that much steam remaining. With the two executes being dead draws and the Ravaging Ghoul, Ravaging Ghoul kind of you need to save it for the executes as well. Not even yeah. having the second dragon. So at 2 6, blank. Ryan's so low, though. He's at 12. Can't afford to. Ba he can't basically afford to take any more damage because. Uh, Normally, by turn eight, you're thinking about Grom and, R Grom and Ragnaros, right, mm -hmm. against this deck. Those are, like, the cards you're thinking of, especially after you see this guy not even, 
not even giving me the dragon. It's like, what does he have in his hand? It has to be Gwalin Ragnaros. I don't know. If I was if I was Nyman, I would really think that the other player had those cards. Yeah, like big ones. Yeah. There's just coins, so he could have coined out Ragnaros, but maybe you wouldn't coin out Grom here over this, right? Well, this also is pretty good versus Flame Wakers in a way. Yeah. So how do you deal with this board now? Double Flame Waker, Sorceress, and Arcan uh, Missiles? And you have to draw. You can't, yeah. you can't Missile down this with Double exactly. Flame Waker. Like, exactly. Yeah. This will not save you. Uh oh. That's one Frost good card. First of all, it's something. How does he want to do this? Play one Flame Waker, Frostbolt, Frothing. And then Missiles. And just yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other plays? Do you ever just Mana Worm here instead? I guess so. Missiles first. Well, maybe. You will kill the frothing, so you don't have to frostbolt it. I feel like you have a good shot of wasting some damage like this. Like, say you have two. Yeah, you hit it like three times. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> There's Answer Jake and Ravaging Ghoul. That's not much damage, but. Yeah, Ravager Ghoul is your execute activator. Do you, do you want to use Ravager Ghoul here? Well, you can um, coin Drake, out the right? execute as well and get the Drake down there. Yeah, it's not bad, actually. You've seen one Flame Strike. Because something you can do is just Drake Hero Power, trade the weapon for the four health, and trade your minion for the Sork Apprentice. That right, does right. not push face damage, uh, but you know it's a good move otherwise. Azalea yeah. is definitely value face damage as much as he can at this point. I would definitely coin out the execute and get the Drake down there. Just try and threaten the lethal for next turn as well. So, so with the Ravage and Ghoul as well. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They didn't start with the Ghoul then. That's with the second Ghoul, it's even more tempting. So what do you do now? Like, do you, do you still trade with the 2-5, I guess? Yeah, yeah, so he goes for the, for the weapon kill. That's an okay board to have. Yeah, I mean, you have a board that hopefully can push some damage, or at least, like, by time. I mean, hmm. No spells for the Flame Waker. That's, like, not the can of hand you want. Mm, let's find an Arcane Blast here. Ooh. Mm, fireball. That can deal with the 4-4, at least. Yeah, so do you, do you put a win? Do you, you know, just try to play safe? Or, you know, what is it here? Play Water Metal or Fireball? Well, you always have Yogg-Saron somewhere in your deck, as yeah. Nyman. That's true. I mean, if he just plays Warrim until he's leaving six damage on board, gets killed by Ragnar sometimes. Well, if he doesn't, um, well, he can play Water Elemental, right? So, like, yeah. then Ragnar has a uh, 33%. But I think I like Fireballing still. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Never Grom or Rag. Well, in theory, he can actually just uh, attack to two into the four-four, play double goal, and play the two-six. That creates a strong board. Strong Develop board. Develop all your minions. But then you that's actually really have execute in. activators in your hero power as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't exactly get stranded, so that's still good for you. Yeah, I like that. I mean, if you want to develop your minions here to finish the game, that's a good move. Uh, otherwise, you, you know, hero power, execute, but you know, then you don't play your rules, right? So they're, they're just sitting there buying, giving Mage more time to draw into... How much consideration is Yogg, though? If you dump everything straight into turn 10 for Yogg, it could just all die to Yogg as well. Also like Kabbalist Tome. Like, yeah. if you're not fast enough, Mage can still outvalue you, and uh, Mage has a lot of good minions there. Yeah, like, knowing this hand... I guess keeping the dragon is also valuable because then Corruptors you can get. Azalea's been holding back for a while and he seems to be going down that same path. So you actually hold back your dragon here? Wow, mm -hmm. you did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. In theory, we can War Elemental Fireball the 3 3 ping, so we have 3 6, we are at 9. Watermetal does start locking down that Druid Hero Power from hitting in the face. I wonder how much that matters. I mean, you have to realize your opponent doesn't have Rag right now to, you know, for the 8. Eventually, though, you know, you go to 8 and then Rag will always kill you. 
Mammon Flame Worker is probably like stronger this turn, but you don't get the lock down the hero power. The question is, can you ignore the free free? And if you, so you have to ping the two one. Then you have eight mana left. If you play Water Elemental, you have four mana left. So in theory, you can play Flame Waker and uh, Mana Worm, but then you just give Flame Waker for free. So Flame Waker will, ha will have taunted away, so that free free can actually attack, or you can just take four damage to face, which is not great. I mean, Diamond has to have a read what Zlay's hand is, right? Zlay has just not been playing anything. Yeah, especially uh, since this dragon came out as the 2-6. You know that there's no dragon, um, at least from a few turns ago, and you know that Zlay hasn't hit the high drops yet. Yeah. So it just seems to be a handful of removal or situational cards. So that means it's tempting to use your fireball to remove the guy because the hand is more situational. You mm -hmm. can win yeah. by just playing your minions as as Nyman. Eventually, you can maybe grind out Zelay because his hand is so situational, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. That, that's why I like the first play. Um, and now Zelay still has, like, situation cards, as you mentioned. But you, you have to wonder, like, if he would go for mm, this Ravaging Ghoul and Twilight Guardian last turn, he would have a decent board. Yeah. And he played too much around Yogg. <laughs> playing around Yogg. <laughs> Yeah, and Zelay <laughs> spending this turn basically thinking, is the Yogg there? Would he uh -huh. have played the Yogg last turn? How yeah. much can I go all in here? Because, you know, he's been drawing situational card after situational card, so where, where is his mindset going with all of this? Yeah. yeah. He's really close to winning, though, because that shapeshift is doing some good work. You know, setting up the rag lethal. And is he still keeping the Twilight Garden in hand? Wow, these are incredibly weak plays. <laughs> And now another removal card, which is not bad. <laughs> this feels so bad. So many fireballs and three threes. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> if it keeps you alive and yeah. if you win the game, yeah. thanks to that. Exactly. You leave up this three three, you died a four damage stuff. Core crowns have been played though. Grom kills you. Do you just oh. go Thoris and Mana Worm? Solar minions. Kill the free free. Yeah, get the five five out there. It's great for trading into Zelay's situational cards as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think I... Hmm, I'm not sure. Painful. <laughs> I kind of like just playing the Man Worm, uh, blast it with the Roaring Torch, and then playing your Emperor, kind of. Yeah, that's what I suggested. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I thought you meant the three minions. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> never, never. You definitely keep that free-free. Eh, I'm not sure definitely, but, yeah. Well, you bought the Worm, so you'll have, like, it's free on board. Yeah. Not playing the worm? Saving the mana worm. That is weird. No, 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 no. He's playing it, okay. Because I, I, I couldn't even fathom around, like, why you save, save the mana Yeah, there would be no reason. Uh -huh. Maybe he was like, yeah, I need to kill it, but then, oh, yeah, I need to play a worm before uh, killing this with a spell. There is finally a big Ooh. minion. That's a dragon, so you can play your Drake yep. before playing that if Three, you six, want. 3-6 and a 9-9. Nine, nine. And you can even have, you can coin the Blood Ticker if you want to. So is this the all-in turn that Zilla is looking for? You can even coin out the Blood Ticker, right? Yeah. You would coin out the Blood Ticker on the Emperor, right? Emperor. Yeah, because it's going to trade and you can hear power down. And I think you have to because it's another minion, so. It's also More a Grom damage. activator. Zelay's that's thinking true, that's a little true. bit about whether or not that's worth saving. Um, I think Zelay is like, if I get Grom, I'd probably win anyways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. four damage to face. <laughs> it's like, also, it's like 10 health minion, so he's like so close. Uh, that will be it. No way to draw the cards. Oh. No way to stop the 9-9. That looks like it's it. Yeah, Zelay is taking another yeah. game from Nyman. This means that Nyman is down to his last deck. Yeah. Which is uh, which deck is this? I mean, keep, uh, an interesting thing to note is um, the way Nyman played, right? Because he's always fireballing these three threes. Yes. Yeah. I guess not, since his life's so low, he just figures he would probably lose to like Rom and Rag anyways. So he just decides to use fireballs. I don't know if he got punished for the nine nine because he did all, use all his burn on three threes, but technically fireball doesn't actually kill the nine nine anyways. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think if he would not fireball the uh, the free threes, he would just die faster. Killed yeah, like like. by the Blatsy <laughs> Acorn, that's it. Yeah. Okay. So that is his last Zoo. deck. Last deck, yeah. This Zoo is the, his last deck, and he's playing the more aggressive one with Leroy, with... I'm not sure if there's a Wrath Guard, but Double Soul Fire, like a Junkie. Oh, the uh, Double Soul Fire build is actually pretty interesting. It grabs a lot of tempo um, back from the Dragon Warrior if he happens to fall behind. 
Yeah, Dragon is weak this whole fire, huh? It's perfect dance oh, yeah. for like frothing and Corcrons. And Azure Drakes even, mm. uh, Corruptors. So many good targets. Also getting a good hand, uh, good start for nine months. And, so and there are uh, Zelay's threats that he was missing from the last game. <laughs> Play and he's not happy about it. No, no, that's, a, that's an awful. <laughs> he's not happy with this hand. You never want to just, as this like kind of like fast warrior, you never want to do your first play is turn four against the zoo. Well, it's still probably turn four for his play. <laughs> yeah. oh, Ravaging was great versus the zoo. Yeah, but that's not, not a card you want to play for tempo generally, right? It's like that's so good of a card that you just hold it for when you can get more value. Because overall, this matchup favors the lay it, on paper. But do you play it, though? It's like, oh, I guess not. No, 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 you don't play yeah, it. Yeah, you don't play it. That's like one thing I've learned. It's like, just never play Ravager Go for tempo. It's exactly. Like, just always try to get tons of value for it. It's just too strong. Now to counts I mean, I guess well. two, at least, yeah. Oh, man, this, this game is going to be over soon. You... That's kind of weak to Corcoran, right? It's only mm -hmm. a 1-5. You might actually Corkron into 2-4. Well, you could into Corkron into the Councilman and yeah, put it at 1 health, yeah. and then set up the Ravager going the next turn as well. Is it better than a Corkroning the 2-4 and setting up the uh, Ravager goal next turn? Uh, I mean, the thing is, I can see either way, actually, because since you only have that as your Execute Activator, you can attack the 2-4 and then Ravager Ghoul, because it kills the imp game more cleanly, and then you can just Execute the... Um, yeah, but it might put more power on board, actually, right? Mm -hmm. If you go into the 2-4, because it buffs the Councilman. It also puts the 1-1. One -one. So maybe, okay. yeah, maybe Councilman is, is better. Well, even uh, with the way that Nyman has positioned his minions, um, the Defender of Argus doesn't punish you too much as well, because you'd have to Argus both the Peddler and the uh, Imp Gang boss. So the Councilman would still remain as one health. OK. Fair point. This is almost kind of heads up. Um, this is very heads up into the Ravager Ghoul, right? When you're right, making right. this kind of play. Uh, so this is why Nyman's like kind of hesitating on, say, something like Juggler Ritual. Yeah, this is not the turn to be throwing out the ritual here. But. It's hard to make. Do you still do it? <laughs> oh, she's still <laughs> going for it. I mean, it is heads up, but then it's like. Maybe the ritual just tap. Trade to one and two for two and tap. Oh, you might just tap after. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Well, this board is not that great versus goal anyway. Yeah, I like that. I like I like the fact that he's willing to just trade in this guy. I wonder if it feels better to try to go for the pings though. Actually, mathematically, this isn't better, right? Because yeah, it was twenty five percent chance of killing it, and then you get four damage in on the face. Even if you value that nothing, because it'll just die to a whirlwind anyways. Um, yeah, and you don't ever want to give up the, the villager death rattle here. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the situations are both ping face, then it's the same, you just trade after. The only, the only bad part is if one ping hits it, but then you're only giving it one damage, and that's and you can like 50% time. Soon. And then 25% time, you gain four damage. Like I think it's like kind of works out better, if you know what I mean. Like if You, you don't gain four, because... Oh, no, buff. you gain two damage. Yeah, you gain two. So it's like either lose one or gain two. But it's double the chance of 25 to 50%. I guess it's the same then, kind of, like, percentage-wise. And maybe, yeah, okay. Probably don't want to talk about that. <laughs> it's like, give us a grass track, girl. Let's, let's get even deeper. Yeah. <laughs> Just end up talking about this whole time. <laughs> So he decides not to execute that to free in the end. Ooh, and the second ritual coming out here. Uh-oh. Those things are scary. Yeah. Oh. You always They always have it after you swipe or ravaging cool. Yeah, I mean, you do have to play for it, especially with your hand being the, the Gormok and the two POs. You just make so much use of out of, out of the, the stray 1-1s. One yeah. Would you still tap, maybe? Or do you just go for fives, five 1-1s? One, one like, you trade the 1-1 one, one into 3-1. And I can could definitely uh, see a tap here because your hand yeah. is so bad. Like if you get punished by the second goal, your hand mm -hmm. is just all like buffs. Straight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, Gormok double PO. He wants to get more of a proactive hand. Yeah, I, li I like the tap here. And then uh, yeah, I'll, pro I'll probably still trade to free to free two and then ritual. Yeah, I'll trade everything basically. Mm. 
can you solve now? Well, the second goal is really deadly for you. But whatever happens, the goal is still deadly. Yeah. Like PO or Soulfire and keep the imp alive, right? No, probably not. I don't know. Could be. Not trading. Yeah. yeah. I think not trading is fine. You I like definitely prefer not trading, right? I, I don't think there's a reason to trade against this guy. You're yes. just losing two damage. If Exit. you get blown out by the ghoul, then he would make the trade for you anyway. Yeah, exactly. Like, he just trades for yeah. you if there's a ghoul. You don't really care if he trades a 3 2 into the 1 1s. Mm -hmm. You don't care about execute as well? Like because uh, exec yeah, execute. execute and actually like kill the two free and you lose it, then ghoul starts trading into your one one. But it's whatever. It's just two one ones for the ghoul. Even then, let the blood execute. Yeah. I think it's too narrow to play around like that. Okay. Well, now we can either we can execute, trade one of the one ones and play the three six also. Um, Zlay is a very high value hand. He's trying to survive to get the use out of his Grom mission, his small proc. Also, he naturally has a higher mana curve in this matchup, I believe, so... Mm -hmm. So actually here trading punished him in a way. Because yeah. if, he would tra if he would trade, he would be in a better spot. He would he have like Grom yeah. activator. That's like such a... That's, uh, do you just start by Moral Quality and try... Yeah, try, try to get try a one, get a one. Yeah, exactly, get a Flame Imp. I, I, Let's go. I agree. There's just so many one drops. It's like... Plus his villagers. 33% per, chance almost. Like Squires. one your deck is... Yeah! Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Let's do it. That's what you want to see. Never punished. No. Well, actually, like, I agree with you guys. Going for face was a better decision there. Yeah, this is actually insane. Especially the, the Voidwalker has a one drop blocking out the Malkrock the next turn. Yeah. yeah. And you only have damage remaining in the hand. This is potential, like, lethal even very soon, yeah, if that's not even next turn. 12, 17, 18, if he gets uh, some more damage, and yeah. Yeah. It's very hard for him to... Like, what, what could be more... Like, probably, like, Direwolf or something. Mm -hmm. You don't have Mana to Leroy and all those cards. I think, you're, I think you're happier playing the uh, Corruptor and the Champion than the yeah. Malkrock, just getting more minions out on the board. Going to the Grom as well. Play around Defender of Argus a bit also. You have a very good target for at least one of those minions. The other one doesn't have a good target. What do you think of like Drake and Astro Champion instead of Corruptor? Uh, it is your last dragon, so getting the Corruptor oh, effect after dragon, at least yeah. is still okay. Actually, yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. playing Grom next turn no matter what, so... Yeah, I strongly agree with you. I also think that 1-1 one, one is actually a good target anyways. I was saying it's bad target, but because Zoo is so good at pumping minions, killing 1-1 one, one here means that there's no small minion to pump. You don't really want right. to pump the 4-4 four, four in trade, right? So it's like... Yeah, and playing around PO is already pretty reasonable. Yeah. Pretty uh, reasonable. That's fine. So we have... Uh, is Dero lethal? Yeah, no, I think it's not. Leader is for yeah, yeah, Leader was not. No mana, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If gang boss and a positive villager is not bad. But then are you forced to go face again or do you go for value trade? I think you trade here. You just play both minions, soul fire the five four trade for the three two. Right. Right. Oh, like actually what about just leaving on three two go face? <laughs> um you did you get quite punished by the Gromash as well. Oh, uh, it kills your four four. But the three two itself is not really threatening your other minions too well, though. No, that's very true. Boom. All right, face plan. It's face time. So Grom going into the four four, and then you can't do much. Like three two going for face, I guess. Yeah, Grom looks good. But yeah, that's what I mean. Like, like this three two is like it's not really doing anything in a way. Yeah, <laughs> you can trade for the one one, but it's hanging out. <laughs> but Grom is still the best play here, I believe. Unless you get a really good weapon from Malkrock. No, no, Grum's you don't want to use your face anymore, anyways, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And this is not Leroy. It's damage though. I mean, Naiman has quite a few turns now that um, the Grom will be easily dealt with with the uh, the PO as well. Oh, oh that's another PO, PO and corruption. How much damage? Three plus Eight, ten from hand. Yeah, with ten PO. plus three on board. Thirteen. Yeah, but then still you need to deal I with Grom. Maybe you just take the flame imp here for flame some repetitive oh, damage. Yeah, because you already have the PO. Yeah. Do you trade for Grom or not? No, right? Uh, the Grom. Yeah, you can just PO the 1-1. The one, one. And how do you really lose from there? Do you? You're at 21 life total. You have the incredible Warlock Cure power. 
You've this seen is Guardian team. as well. Mm -hmm. So one taunt is out of the way. You've seen one goal already. You just steadily deal damage every turn, and then at some point you get Leroy and win. Wait, so mm -hmm. if you trade the one winner with PO and you take the flame imp, oh, and you can use your imp gain to trade for that one. So mm -hmm. your imp gain is protected from that three two. Doesn't. Oh wow, he might even try and. Seems like face, right? Be aggressive here. Yeah. Okay, so he says, you know what? You will not have any more burst. So Grom will have to trade into one of my minions. And if you don't, I just have enough. Yeah, I like this. I feel like me and Saint don't play enough aggro. <laughs> 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 it's, like, it's, it's hard. I, I, I like this. Big board, two POs. You don't care about Grom hitting it in face for 10, at least this turn. I mean, how can you deny the peddler PO value? Your one drop... <laughs> And your uh, your buff kills off the Grom. They're they're very important win condition against Zoo. I think it all depends on uh, how Nyman is building up his deck, and his deck is uh, more yeah. And also, I think I think he has a horse rider in the deck as well, like Arjun horse rider. Mm -hmm. So he has so much uh, damage available to him. Now this is on board four plus eight twelve. Um, Crazy Alchemist is not ooh. more damage. So eight ten twelve one off lethal. Yeah, one off lethal. And if he taps, he'll have to trade if he doesn't get the damage. Well, he is definitely tapping. That's oh, damage. Yes. There we go. That's enough. So Diamond is going to win this game at least. And uh, be 3 2 versus LA. He knows how to play aggro, he knows how to go for face. Yeah. This is a very scary game. Yeah. <laughs> it came really? down to the wire for Diamond. But I uh, gotta see the Zalai's opening was uh, not the best. Yeah, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So then I got an opportunity to, to grab this game from him because I believe this is a good matchup for Warrior. Or at least like Warrior is slightly favored. Yeah. Yeah. Diamond played very consistently in the last like three or four turns. You know, even like the four four hitting face head trading. So yeah. like it all played very consistently just to pressure that face damage and uh, like you don't want to. What you don't want to do as an aggro deck is make like you don't want to switch back and forth between value and face kind of. Right. right? Exactly. It's like you, you do exactly. the four four face. From that point forward, you probably just all face, right? Like, once you make that call, you just, you play one way. Yeah, and Nyman's thinking about the other additional Soulfire and the Leroy left in the deck and all the burn that he can find. Yeah. Horse Riders and whatnot. Oh, is it uh, multiple Horse Riders as well? I'm not sure how many Horse Riders he's running, actually. I think one. Maybe one, yeah. Well, but Nyman has found the, uh, the Dark Shark Councilman, which is an uh, incredible card for Zoo in this matchup. Just Do you just three keep completely. his hand? Um, I mean, it's Nyman. Yeah, right? Nyman. I think Nyman Mulligan already. Yeah. Oh, okay. That looks like a good hand to three keep. Yeah, especially Voidwalker kind of uh, blocks out the damage that Roots would do, and then you have a value card going into the two turn into Councilman as well. So I have to ask you, Cyan, because uh, we have different opinions on this matchup with Strife mm -hmm. Pro. What, what do you think? Who's favored, Zor or Druid? Uh, I've looked at the stats, and the Druid is slightly favored, but I think when it comes down to perfect zoo play, when you see um, pros play this matchup, the number should be slightly zoo favored, in my opinion. So basically, your mind tells you Druid, your heart tells you zoo, or is it the, <laughs> the opposite? Well, the opposite. <laughs> in, <I don't> know. <laughs> in the two years or so um, of playing Hearthstone, the Druid has traditionally been very unfavored for... Uh, going up against the Zoo Warlock. Yeah. But of course the token Druid is able to um, fight back in the mid game and build up its own board with Violet Teacher and that becomes a huge factor in how this matchup swings. Um, Wouldn't skill benefit Druid more though in a way? Like isn't Druid against Zoo more skill dependent on Druid than Zoo? Yes, I agree. Um, because I've seen many Druids actually play badly. That's it's not an easy matchup for Druid to play against Zoo either. Like, you have to know when, to, like, how long to hold swipes and... Yeah, yeah exactly. What, yeah. yeah, and from Zoo perspective, you just do what you do normally, more or less. <laughs> I mean, not quite. Yeah, kind of. Oh, shift your stairs. The good Zoo it. player also just tries to avoid a lot of Druid's outs as well, and they can do that pretty efficiently, planning their next few turns out. Ah, uh, no Shifter's Eris. No Shifter's Eris this time. It's either Void Walker or Shifter's Eris. Walker's good. I wonder if it's right to ever just take Shifter's Eris. That's a lot of hoping, huh? I like taking Shifter's Eris in this matchup, but it is really random. Yeah, you know, if there's one matchup it's good, it might be this one. Yeah, no it's an hard additional removal from well. Druid, kind right. of. Uh, yeah, you can sometimes just get like a nice 5-drop from Shifter's Eris. 
Yeah. Like against really fast, like aggro versus aggro, zoo versus zoo, it's like too slow. You, you need that, you know, you need everything you can get immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, against control, like control warrior or priest, you know, they have hard removal, like execute. So it doesn't really matter if you get a big minion. Druid might just be like the one matchup where it's actually like, kind of good to take it. Who knows? It's... Shooter's errors can also annoy you. Mm -hmm. Like on turn two, changes into Sylvanas, and you're like, oh wow, I would like to have Sylvanas in matchup. <laughs> <laughs> and it changes into like Karen on turn four. You're like, oh please! <laughs> and then you can finally play it, and there's Angry Chicken. Yeah, probably <laughs> a little bit too troll. <laughs> yeah, that Voidwalker's locking all the living roots as minions. <laughs> so, what do you guys think about Zalai's hand? Because we didn't talk about it much. Uh, this it doesn't look that bad actually. He has re he has removal for what can Zoo do. Like he can't. Really remove and that? he has one of the, the only good answers against Councilman on three as well. Which is what? Just Roots and Wrath are down. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that looks good. You you do kind of want to set up for your coin five into five with this hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, by removing this big threat on three, and since your next two turns are not reactive, it's like just playing minion into minion, then you can remove this. Uh, I, I definitely like that. Yeah, and the Force of Nature pick is a very good heads up uh, pick from Soleil because it just softens up the board for your swipe as well. Yeah. yeah Force of Nature overall is pretty good versus Zo in this matchup. Just having a couple of minions that can trade. That's a lot of pressure gone from Nyman. He's definitely hoping that the uh, Councilman could carry him throughout this game. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Is off second the second this, one is, this one is more tempting because they're worse minions. Uh, well, Boar, Boar, Boar can actually work with uh, POs as well. Uh, yeah. You already have a Leroy, though. I guess you can trade easier with... <laughs> yeah. Come on. The shifters are... <laughs> this time, you, I agree. You, you take the zeros here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's time. It's time for shifting. <laughs> it's time. Definitely not taking the tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you know, it's a token druid, so it can kill oh, the tokens. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. I guess you play the boar, though. It's like better for your curve, I guess. If you're doing this, you probably don't play the... Oh, wow. I, just, uh, I don't know. And like, boar can w uh, work with the Dire Valve, it can work with PO. It's not a charger in your deck, so... So we, we, there's some synergy there. It's like a two-one charger with, if this guy survives. Maybe Nyman took Zeros before in some um, match, and he was, uh, you know... Uh, guys, we, we might have um, uh -huh. taken Yogg Druid for granted here. There happens to be a Wait, few what? chosen as a top deck. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So <laughs> I, I remember. Um, so this deck, I, I, I came to Zale and I'm like, all right, so we're playing Yogg Druid, and he's like, yes, but no. Yes, but no. So yes, Kuthun but no. <laughs> so this is... A Yogg-Thun Druid. This is the Yogg-Thun Druid. <laughs> the Yogg-Thun Druid. I've heard this is the Kathun Druid uh, with yogg I've played this deck before. So what is specific about this deck? Nothing specific about it. You just play Kathun like, Druid and, and just, you have Yogg. Well, okay, so you have Fandral and the Raven Idols, right? Some yeah. Kathun Druids didn't run it for a while. Um, if you're running Yogg, you probably do. You, you have to run you, ha you have it, right? You have to yeah. run You have a lot of spells you, you play. The Raven Idols. So why not play yogg Saron in the deck as well? I think the blanket statement here is that Fangel and the Raven Idols are such a strong package yeah. in Druid that even running it in the Cthulhu Druid is fine. And then you might as well throw in the Yogg yeah. for your, your secondary 10 drop as yeah. well. Then you might as well just take out the Cthulhu cards and add more token activators and just play Yogg. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, 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 I guess my opinion is that I like adding in Yogg and Cthulhu Druid, but then I like taking out Cthulhu and Yogg Druid even more. <laughs> 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 like, I think it's better than normal Cthulhu Druid, but... Nice, right, so let's take out the Cthulhu cards. Okay, anyways. Uh, that charges for two. You can kill it. Need something to pop the Divine Shield. Do you ever just coil the Divine Shield? Is that even a consideration? Yeah, I mean, this, this is good value for the um, the board. You probably won't find more than that, at least. You don't want to trade these min like this. These minions are all weak to the Divine Shield. Like, nothing yeah. feels yeah. that great to trade. And, you, and, and this board is not bad, so maybe you, you really like coil the Divine Shield, attack your board into it. But also, none of these minions are that important either. Like, you, I guess you can trade Woodwalker in as well, since if you're playing a Druid by turn like five, seven, everything's big, right? So you don't really care about like this 
two three that it's more about the, the health of or the attack of a minion more so than the health. Mage leaves it up, I guess. He's just gonna oh, face. Wow. No regrets. Yeah. All in on the board. Because Morcle cycling gives you uh, more POs and soul fires. So that's huge not to cycle the coil potentially. Mm -hmm. So I guess he wants to cycle the coil 100%. And he also has, this, this deck is so aggressive. Yeah. The only problem is, like, you're playing pretty well. Eh, how weak is this to swipe, right? Because you're leaving, like, you're not even trading 2-1. You're just going face. So. Swipe's not actually that good, right? Yeah, swipe is not amazing. It's it's something, but... He does have a hero uh, coin, so you can hero power something with swipe. But then there's three Voidwalkers, so there's nothing to hero power either. You can't target the... And if you swipe, you, you have to swipe the Direwolf. Yeah. So, hmm, it's not worth it. And if you play, so basically, when you play a taunt, it's awkward because those minions can then like get uh, a lot of direwolf alpha value. So you don't want to play a taunt, I guess. You want to kill the direwolf, yeah. which means like you probably have to swipe. I like I like just playing ta two taunts in a row from Zelay's perspective, probably. Right now? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think if you play Force of Nature, you won't have two turns to play two taunts. You might die. Like oh, no, you either taunt or swipe. Like. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I think just either... I'm not sure which time I prefer more, you know, whether you innervate out mm -hmm. that one or this one, but it looks like you're kind of setting for two taunts in a row. Cyan, which, which one did you like? Did you like uh, just going for the 4-6, swipe, or 5-10? Five, five, no, I think I would have gone for the Ancient of War first because it forces more of the board to be traded in. And at that point, Nyman might be forced to play Ritual for the reload and then Swipe becomes a lot better. And in this board state, the Drew of the Claw doesn't really resolve a whole lot and it just gets taken out by Power Overwhelming. And at that point, you know, Nyman can still hold on to the PO if he needs it, or the Ritual if he needs it. There we go, we see Leroy come out. Cycle. Yeah. You know, every time we suggest a play, I think Nyman manages to find one even more aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> he really knows this deck quite well. And there's the horse rider. So this is, what, six? Nine damage to face that you can... Knowing Nyman, everything is going face here. Yeah, it almost, like, it almost like doesn't even make sense to trade. I guess this 2-1 into the 4-2 makes sense. Yeah, that's a lot of value for that little boar. Nope. <laughs> No, all face. It's that the value of it is hitting them in the face. <laughs> okay, he traded at least with one. Wow, there. I'm actually surprised by that. Missed the damage so, like, face. Why, why take that trade, not take the other trade? <laughs> because, like, uh, that one dies. Like, yeah, I wonder what. Uh, yeah, I'm I mean, sure. the chosen has no value trading into your one two, right? So you're happy taking that, and the boar is mm. technically pushing a little more damage. Okay. 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 No, what I'm saying is, like, he might as well just hit his, hit his face for one, two with that. What's the one, one doing <laughs> anyways? Because it's, it's, it's like you're not playing around swipe anymore by doing this, since you're leaving that weak to the hero power after swipe anyways. Uh, you right? play around swipe a bit. Do you? By like, because then one, one could kill the two, 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 two I think. Wait, so, can? Uh, yeah, because like, then, like, yeah, swipe one right, for right. walker, yeah. Wait, are you right? Yeah, this, the, when you swipe one for walker, you're attacking the second walker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're and then right. one, one kills one of your... Yeah. Okay, so that makes sense, yeah. So we're trading everything, going juggler, juggler, ritual. Juggler, juggler, ritual. That's mm -hmm. a sick sentence. I mean, you've got... The opponent has three health remaining on the board after you trade, and you've got your six juggles. Six juggles, that's pretty scary. Well, you can also get value from the wolf here, and the Arjun mm -hmm. horse rider. Yeah, that, that charges for three, because yeah. you have the dire wolf, and you get two pings. Yeah. It's like five. Ritual, you get... Six, but it's like more random. It's actually a close call, right? Maybe horse is better. It's tough to say. Like you can trade in the two one first, then play horse rider on that slot there. Well, it might be better here now because actually just play it on the right. right you still now. force out swipe, right? And then you have to reload with ritual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. No, that's that's terrible. one more minion that has to die. It's like everything now, I guess. That's everything. Or do you just not attack? Yeah, we probably not attack here. You just hope there is no swipe. And uh, Zale doesn't have the second Cthulhu activator. He doesn't have any Cthulhu minions. It really looks like a Yorkstarron Druid with a troll Cthulhu chosen. <laughs> 
So Shrive looking for the best play? Yeah, he's looking for the best play. Can you can you survive here? You swipe the two free. I mean, if you're willing to hero power, you can take out both jugglers and leaving a 5 1 to trade against a 2 2 2. Take out both jugglers? Oh, no, no, you, no, you uh, can't then, because then the wolf. Just, huh? yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you have to deal with the wolf. And how much respect do you have for, for double juggler? I think you kill one. Or do you go for force? Well, force is not bad because then you have more targets that can uh, soak the knives. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know Diamond's Hands is ritual for that one. <laughs> you hope it's a... I don't know. Is it PO? No, it actually PO is bad for you anyway. Uh, well, if you just hear power here, you're, you're just dead, yeah. right? Because ritual will deal the six. You have the, the juggler for two. And he happens to have a grand total health of eight. Yeah. You can tap just in case. <laughs> Wait, do you ever just PO here? You, you win. Because you just peel first. Wait, wait, wait. If you there is a if you peel <laughs> first, you you if that that uh, he doesn't. Wait, no. is it lethal anyways? Um, <laughs> it's like five five oh, it's knives here. Anyway, it's lethal anyways. If it kills, yeah. if it kills, it, it's lethal anyways. Yeah. If it doesn't, then it's not. <laughs> oh. oh! What? <laughs> oh man. Well, no, where that's not is the young well, something like a Dara Karakoa would be, wouldn't be bad. Yeah, he needs to AoE, clear everything somehow. Basically, like swipe, which uh, even then doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, what can he you really He's a taunt, find? right? No taunts. Nope, no taunt, no swipe. Nothing. Swipe, you need a swipe and that extra hero power. So a two inner rate swipe, I guess, it would mean he wouldn't be down board. But yeah, this is devastating for Zale because his last remaining attack happens to just be Hunter, Hunter right? Yeah. And this is Can his. Can you still get something that you have two yeah. innervates? Uh, oh, not really. Um, <laughs> swipe. Have you used double swipe already? No. That's a taunt? No! <laughs> he had three innervates. Final mockery! <laughs> and uh, Nyman was another one. Yeah, Nyman really pulling it back with this aggressive zoo play. Yeah. And uh, so, what's the matchup? Like, I think Nyman needs a break now, but uh, what's the matchup, uh, Zoo versus Hunter, actually? Because. Originally, Hunter was really good versus Zoo because mm -hmm. there was like a expl double explosive trap and uh, unleash the hounds, but now Hunter changed a lot. And uh, I played your version of Cyan a lot with the Dread Scale. And mm -hmm. uh, it was okay versus Zoo, but now. Uh, it was very tailored to do well against Zoo, but I think um, Selene might. We, we haven't seen it played, right, as the fifth deck. So it could very well be um, like the versions we've seen before. I think G2 uh, in its entirety brought the Camel Hunter as the fifth deck, yeah. which is targeting more so the control decks that they can't beat. No one um, drops, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. The, the Cavalders with the, the Camel Hunter? Yeah, 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 you're targeting decks that don't run one drops. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, list and Soleil has. Uh, his teammate... Uh, Archon Amnesiac happens to favor a more hybrid hunter with squires, with abusive sergeants, uh, more to fight early board against Zoo as well with double unleash. So if he's bringing that version, he has a good odd here. At actually, least the coin flip. I actually but. saw a version with like uh, almost like Direwolf Alpha or Timberwolf mm -hmm. and double yeah. unleash, like that kind of where you're super heavy trying to fight Zoo. Um, do you think that could be a deck that's the latest running? With I saw Timberwolf that as well. I don't know. It's like either Timberwolf or Direwolf Alpha, because okay. you can Direwolf Unleash and trade, you know, trade your guys really efficiently into Zoo at that point. Yeah, you capitalize a lot on the Direwolf synergy, especially with uh, Argent Horse Rider. Yeah. And so, like it, that oh, as so well. that is the hybrid kind of yeah. list yeah. you're referring. Yeah, to. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I, I don't actually know the hybrid list that well, like the hybrid hunter. But hybrid. I, know, I know I've played against this Direwolf Double Unleash deck before. So. Yeah, yeah. It's it's basically more aggressive and uh, has better openings as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, like right now, people play tigers yeah. in their lists, yeah. and uh, in the hybrid version, you play what one, one tiger, one high main, double yeah. high main, one tiger. Depends. Like some people even don't play high mains. Yeah, and if you're teching for the tournament, you might just run double uh, string with thorn tiger to be a little bit better against uh, rogue as well, because that's a highly predicted uh, fit deck as well. Yeah. So the question: Which hunter is Zale, uh playing lies, I believe, in his lineup. If he was thinking that he can defeat Zoo with other decks, mm -hmm. maybe his hunter is supposed to beat Warrior. Yeah. And uh, what do you guys think, like looking at the, at the lineup overall? 
what was Zalay's band? Uh, Zalay band Warrior. So I guess like he's trying not to win versus Warrior with the Hunter if he ba if he's banning it. We should get a good idea as we go into this. I guess uh, it makes most sense for me to be Hybrid Hunter or something like that then. Yeah. yeah. Less books and deli shots, ah, basically. Ah, there's the Squire. There is the Squire, so it seems like a more hybrid version. All right, yeah. this is the last game of this match. The winner takes it and advances to the top four. Do you think Zeus is still favored, though, and it's just closer to 50, or do you think Hunter can actually be favored against Zeus? Because uh, the normal one, Zeus is favored. I think it's a little shy of 50-50 for Zelay. Okay. Slightly so still, unfavored. Yeah, it's still yeah. unfavored. Even though we're like saying all this, like it's good against Zoo, it's still not good. It's just like more reason. It's better than like yeah. the previous <laughs> version. So yeah, I agree that Zoo is slightly favored, close to 50-50. Uh, it really depends on the openings as well. Zelay really is uh, on the edge of getting a taste of his own medicine here. Throughout this whole tournament, he's been sweeping with Zoo. And here Nyman is bringing it back to game number seven on the back of his own Zoo Warlock. Yeah, actually, I think this is worth talking about as well because Naiman is bringing a different uh, Warlock, so how that specific super aggressive Warlock will fare against Hunter. Mm. There is Horse Riders, Leroy, Soulfires. Well, I think the get... numbers are good, right? Because yeah. um, you're you're putting out the damage before Zelay can even get to Call of the Wild. Yeah, That's exactly. That's pretty important. I don't think Dimguard is particularly good over Leroy against the Hunter, right? Like, that's not a matchup where I'd prefer Doomguard or Leroy. Mm -hmm. Like, against Hunter and things like Rogue, I like Leroy more. Just you want to hit him in the face more. Also, this hybrid version does not, run, uh, does not run any secrets. Right? It's like no secrets version. Right, right. Yeah. Zelay does get a good curve. So does Diamond, actually. But for Hunter, I guess it's more yeah, impressive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Zoo always has a good curve. <laughs> it's just whether you have the right curve, right? So you, like, you, you always at least have a good curve. You have always something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Hunter openings are sometimes so bad that you play Doomsayers in your deck. <laughs> mm. You want an game boss, so you play it before trading, huh? Yeah, because you can get that one, uh, one, one. I'm getting early, it's like one of the best against these. Yep, he gets a 1-1. One, one. It dies to the bow now, but still. Yeah, like, is that even that good? I wonder, oh, well, actually... Uh, you can't really all, always predict the bow. And there's like things like Misha... Deadly as Shot well. as well, so... I think this is kind of yeah. better than yeah. Deadly Shot. Well, you can Kyle play Daryl Wolf, go to the face. You could just take early ritual as well. I, I like early ritual. I don't like playing Dire Wolf here because I like making a wide board and then Dire Wolfing. Uh, More minions. Yeah, yeah, the mm -hmm. minions to trade, kind of. But I could see, I don't know, like trying to get more value from ritual in future turns. I mean, if he's playing Whirlpool, I almost feel like he might Dire Wolf. I don't know. Because if he was getting Ritual, why not just play Ritual for 3 here more cool? Yeah, ritual is, cycle more cool? Ritual is still not bad. Because mm -hmm. you have the same amount of minions, right, as not using the Coil mm -hmm. and just taking the trade and playing three Coils. Well, you take the three. opportunity to use Coil early yeah, because exactly. your hand right now is kind of um, kind of lacking. Mm -hmm. so you just want the options as soon as you can. So if, yeah. you, play, if, you, if you play Dire Wolf here, you attack for two, feels... you lose Dire Wolf to the bow. Yeah, it looks so bad with the bow. One. Yeah, exactly. And here you probably do not lose those minions to the ball. Yeah, well, he can lose the one at most. I doubt he'll take that trade anyways. Yeah, the Festa Wolf is looking pretty good on this board state. Yeah, trades for like all the one ones. Even <laughs> even even with the pumps, uh, it's just the one ones are hard. Like they're good against Zoom. You can double wolf and kill it in one shot. And then leave up the um, the one ones, I guess. <laughs> Do you? That will kill oh. your kill your one ones. I mean, it just seems like you're cashing in on, on all of this um, direwolf value early. What about just yeah, like playing? Uh, if only you can create an even wider board or something like decent, you know, board where you don't play direwolves this turn, and then you can try to 
trade in your Darwolves next turn when there's even bigger moves. Oh! Wow, that's good. Well, here that's, we go. That is that is awesome. I mean, you do that first, and then you maybe even consider soul firing. I mean, I think because it, you have Darwolves to trade, I actually kind of don't like soul firing here. I, I like not doing anything to this free free because the free free will find like it will be trouble to just kill one minion. Mm -hmm. And if you if you so far it, you, you lose more board. Exactly, because you have the two wolves, right? So you want a wide board here. If yeah. you so far that can kill two means. If you don't so far it can only kill one kinda. So far it can also go to face somehow. <laughs> <laughs> if I've learned anything casting this match, it's Nyman <laughs> will most likely take the aggressive route. So yeah. clearing this infested wolf, likely it will just be ignored by Nyman throughout this game. So now for Salah, infested wolf and Archer Squire, and then just think, what do you want to kill? Probably a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, it would be the 2-2. Two -two. Mm. He'd be at 24 and leaving up 4 power against Zoo. But then, yeah, that seems strong, because you take you kind of take board control, right? You have 3 minions against 4. Mm -hmm. Zoo's not, not, like, Zoo's good at trading 1 minion to a big minion, but they're not good at trading against the wide minion, especially, like, 2 death rattle wolves. Uh, you're just at 24 life with only 4 power. It doesn't seem like you can get just completely rushed down, but, you know, looks pretty good, actually, for Zelay here. If he does take four more damage... Diamond, ooh, Diamond has a lot of damage. Yeah, that's like 12 in hand, 14 in hand, even, depending on how you want to count it. Um, you might go for Direwolf and uh, Argent to, like, get the mana. But on mm -hmm. the other hand, you, you might maybe want to cash in on the Direwolves. Yeah, Direwolf's not Double guaranteed, tire. right, that you can get the face damage in. Uh, whereas Horse Rider kind of is guaranteed in a way, but it's more mana efficient to do it the other way. You don't trade here, right? Against Hunter? No, it's... Uh, you probably can't trade I just hope there is no Taunt, no Hunt Master, no... Uh, they want to kill him before Call of the Wild as well. So you can push the 8 this turn. Then an additional 3 from the board should survive. You have 10 from the hand. You're getting very close yeah. to that point. Yeah. I, I actually like the Horse Rider more than Double Dire Wolf. Um, you can just attack and then put it next to the wolf anyways and then get that damage in. It seems unlikely that you lose every single minion. Yeah, in theory you still have two minions left. So we attack and first. I think you don't beat Unleash the Hounds anyways, probably. Yeah, yeah, you can't play around Unleash. Mm -hmm. And then extra three from Horse Rider, yeah. Smork! <laughs> Kill Command doesn't help. No, that's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is like, this is Nyman's game to lose, it seems. Because Call of is not going to be, act like, Call of is not going to be that good, right? It doesn't feel like it's fast enough on turn yeah, it's 8. too late. Mm -hmm. Maybe if there's, like, Unleash the Hounds next turn, or, like, a Hound Master. Is Lay even maybe considering just popping this 3-3 three, three Wolf on the, the Argent Horse Rider? Get more 1-1s one -ones on the board and start trading down. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting, interesting. So maybe do that first and just the, have the, the one I left. almost feel like that doesn't make sense, though, in a way, because... But you got a Dire Wolf oh, no, up no, no, on the no, hand no. as well. Actually, never mind. It does make sense. I was going to say, it doesn't make sense because you're killing... Like, you're not actually killing the uh, Horse Rider because it's a Dawn Shield, but I guess you can kill it the 1-1 then. Mm -hmm. But how much... Are you removing more power like that? Um, you're removing two power instead of... Wait, the free one... Way you're two the free power, one has right? to die anyway because you want to kill a minion on board. You, you can't start racing from this point. Like, you're so far behind, so you need to attack with everything you have, I guess. Oh, he goes face, after all. Yeah, I'm going face, like, kind of, like, activates his call of all kill command a little bit more for Ooh, pressure. That's 5, 9, plus 8. It's uh, 17. It's 12 damage, right? That's yeah. that's 12 from hand on this turn. That's, that's That should be lethal. Hmm? Yeah. That is it for yeah, that's, that's it. So this means Diamond actually reverse sweeps Zalei. Zule with his Zudek. <laughs> wow. He just went for face. He didn't even need Gormok here. And then Diamond is going to the top four after eliminating Zalei from the top eight. Still a good run for Zalei. Good showing, especially with his own tags. But uh, Diamond is the champion here. He is going through. The guys had a handshake. Damn, I guess what a crazy reverse sweep that was. With yeah, that's incredible. All right, let's shuffle in. Uh, wow, the silence. Uh, 
Guys, uh, well, first, maybe, Naiman, congratulations on the win. You go to the top four. And uh, on, the, on the back on the zoo deck, um, your, your own build, and I, I've asked you before in private, but uh, why do you prefer this build to the other builds? Uh, because this build is kind of more aggressive, and uh, having Leroy and Soulfire, I think like it's not about the board control, it's just being about aggressive while keeping the board control. Okay, and it worked for you really well. Yep, I think I've played this deck for like three, uh, three months, might be more. Yeah, hey. I actually remember seeing you play this deck in the old, I think even the qualifier, like the BlizzCon yep. qualifiers. I actually looked up some of the stuff when I was doing research for Zoo decks, and I actually saw this like Soul Fire Leroy, one Arjun Horse Rider is build it, a long time ago. Isn't it too old then? Like, isn't it time to change the deck? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Next patch. I mean, like, when I like decks, I just uh, keep playing them because I really like them and they're really effective. Yeah, the Tempo Mage still assists you, um, and the, you were playing Tempo Mage before, like you even qualified for the for the Winter Champs with the Tempo Mage. Yeah, the current build, I also really like it, the current Tempo Mage, which I have. And why is that? Why do you like it? Uh, because it's really... Uh, you have a lot of choices to make. I mean, not a lot of choices, but currently in the game, like Tempo Mage, it's kind of like the deck where you have to take, uh, take the decisions. And uh, were you surprised when Zalai played uh, Katun's Chosen? In his Druid deck, by the way, because it's no, not like... really. <laughs> okay. I think you do your research by yeah, this point. You, did, you did your research <laughs> more so than us. All right, and uh, guys, do you have any questions for Naiman? Uh, nope, not me. Oh, how does it feel? Because um, you've seen Soleil do so well with Zoo throughout the tournament as well, and it's it's kind of a, a justice for the people that he sweep before with Zoo, and you coming yeah. back with a reverse sweep here. You know, it's so funny. Like uh, with Zaleya, we pretty much have the same lineup, except mm -hmm. for I have the mage and he has the hunter. But yesterday I was also playing against the cop, and he also banned my warrior. Hmm. But the way I'm thinking about it, you're supposed to ban Zulok. Yeah, and you went ahead and recognized that. So he was coming with the warrior, like Zelaya. Yeah. And in the end, I just swept him with the Zulok. Yeah, agreed. In, in this lineup, it's so strong to be the one with the Zeus standing. All right. And um, have we seen? We've seen your. We've seen your Druid, right? Like the Druid is the deck that you've brought for the top eight specifically. Yep. And, and um, why Druid? Why not Hunter? Mm, I don't really enjoy Hunter right now. Okay, that's a good answer. Strife, really no questions? No, no, There's a spool of... Uh, I'm good. I think I'm you're good. Chilling. All right, so we're going to get chilling. Uh, congratulations to Naiman again. And for you guys, we still have one more quarterfinal, and then we'll move on to the semis and the grand final. Stay with us for more Hearthstone.